general art class. Are you ready for a challenge? Okay, this is called uh, Objective Abstract Progression. Now, when we talk about abstracts, a non-objective abstract simply means that there's no object connected with the composition. Um, things like Jackson Pollock's uh, paintings where he was just dripping paints and things like that, there's no object involved. It's simply a design, a composition in color and movement and things like that. An objective abstract is a little bit different. That would be where either there was an object that was originally the concept and you can see remnants of that object. Uh, sometimes they're, you know, you can see everything very clearly. They're just abstracted a little bit. That would be like Mark Chagall, where he has different objects being different sizes, way out of scale things. And so let's look at uh, what we're gonna do. Now you're gonna take your larger sheet of paper this is 15 by 11, and we're going to divide it up into four quadrants. Now you can do it, you know, vertically, like this, and divide it in quarters. Or if your subject matter happens to be very tall and slender, you can do it this way. Okay? Or you can go landscape. And in that case, four quadrants. Or, as I did with my demonstration that you're about to see, I did it this way, because it fit my subject matter. Now, if you're going to do it in a quadrant like this, you can either go one, two, three, four, or you can go one, two, three, four. You know, but make sure that they're connected. Okay, so let's look and see what I did. Let's look at some examples of objective abstract. Now this is Henri Matisse, and this was late in his life when he started to do collages and things like this. So this is a paper cutout, actually, but it's the fall of Icarus. So those of you who know your Greek mythology. Okay, this is another objective abstract because, first of all, the table, if it was really shaped that way, everything would fall off of it. And so he's flattening things out. He's also not worried about depth perception. He wants everything to look flat. This is just trees, a little landscape that he did. The chief function of color should be to serve expression. Now this is Jean Moreau. Moreau was um, a Spanish painter. He was a surrealist. And so there's objects there. You can see, you know, worms with faces and walking creatures and all sorts of things. Definitely not realistic. There's a rooster. But you can see the way he's painted it. You know, it looks like tiles. I try to apply colors like words that shape poems like notes that shape music. Okay, now this is Mark Chagall, and uh, you've heard of Fiddler on the Roof. Well, that whole play was taken from uh, his paintings and you know the concept of it anyway. But look at how he's uh, put figures inside of other figures. Uh, figures that are upside down, fig you know, everything. And so even though they're objective and very recognizable, they're juxtaposed in very unusual positions. Once again, here's a man who is a bass vial, and yet you can see he's looking straight at us, but also looking to our right. Um, you've also got a goat that's playing the violin. And so, you know, objective, you can see the objects, but they're definitely not realistic. And you've seen this one before. This is the Eiffel Tower that uh, has a face on it and uh, you've got the rooster that's almost the same size, figures in the background. And so by creating things that are out of scale, they become uh, um, abstract. Great art picks up where nature ends. 
Pablo Picasso was one of the most innovative artists of, of his day and basically the most innovative artist of all time. Had a lot of skills, but he was always experimenting with different styles. So this is a self-portrait. Definitely abstract. I mean, the lady with the green face, look how narrow her neck is. She, uh, two trapezoids come together, and that's the neck. The Spaniards love the bullfights, but they're also very, very gruesome. And so this is his abstract of the bull fighting with the horse. Woman with a mirror. Okay, definitely not realistic. I paint objects as I think them, not as I see them. Okay, so what I did was I set up a very simple still life. And basically, it started off as four objects. Uh, olive oil bottle, apple, book, and this is a mug. But I learned, uh, since I got started drying it out, I decided that I'd eliminate the mug. So when I'm dividing up my paper, this is a very easy way to, of doing it. You can see that I tilted the ruler, so I put zero here and 16 here. That meant that I could divide it very easily into four equal parts. So four, eight, 12. This is a drafting trick that uh, you should know. And then here's my mark there, there, and the other one's right along there. And so that means that then I could move my triangle along and just go ahead and divide it up. The next thing I did was I sketched out my drawing. And each time I did the drawing, I'm thinking to change it a little bit so that it's not quite as realistic, but change it into something that's a little bit abstract. And so the first thing I did, oops, wrong way, was I started with this one and I painted the book, okay? Now I'm trying to make this look a little realistic. And so there's my olive oil bottle, my apple. And then this had black tape on it, you know, with the bottle cap. Okay. So the second, the last one I added, uh, I think the color of the book pages. And so this time when I painted this, I decided to bring the red all the way up. Okay. Now, I put in the edge of the books, which is a little bit darker, because it's in shadow. And now I put it in the black up here. And so, as you see, I'm trying to simplify everything as I progress through it. And so, the apple's not quite as detailed, it's getting a little rounder. Okay, now I started on the third panel. And once again, I'm trying to make things very, very simple. Okay, I decided that it was time to put in my background here. So there's my first one. And then here, I'm just making it a little bit more blocky. Okay, now you'll notice I've also changed the shape of the bottle. It's no longer the rounded shoulders. Now I'm trying to make it a little bit more angular. I'm also not concerned with it being symmetrical. The apple has become much rounder, still has a stem. So now I've painted this in, but I've eliminated the edge of the book. Now they're just shapes. Okay. Now, this time, I've taken the red up here and around the bottle, and so I'm losing the shape of the book. But I'm repeating this rectangle, because I think it looks nice, and it gives, breaks up this space down here. Okay, so now you, you see this side of the ball is straight, 
So I'm changing the shape of the bottle once again. I got, got ahead and put my colors into this. And now I have a decision to make. What am I going to do with the background? I've got the background along here. And I was thinking, well, maybe I will repeat this uh, color up here. And that would kind of tie things together, give it a unity. But I also started to think about, well, what about the red of the, of the book? And so that was my decision that I made. I decided to put a little bit of a wash here, and that kind of led into this panel here. And so as I went along, I just got to the point where instead of being brush strokes, I just filled it in. So that was basically my abstract progression. So it goes from a realistic painting to being more simplified, more simplified, to this where I can still see the objects, I can still see the book, I can still see the bottle, the apple, and the edge of the books, but it doesn't jump out and say, I'm an apple. So this was my progression, my abstract progression. Now, what I suggest to you is that you find something that's fairly simple. I had three objects, and it worked out okay. Find something that's interesting that you think that you can simplify and change the shape so that it is an abstract, and uh, something that works well within your, your composition, you know, your format of either the rectangular squares or the long, narrow squares, or long, narrow rectangles. So find something that you think would be fun. Think about colors. I wanted to use colors. These are contrasting colors. Red and green are complementary colors. So that made it kind of interesting. And so, you know, find colors that will work well. They can be all related, very harmonious that way. Or they can be juxtaposed like opposite colors. But find something that makes an interesting composition.